Hello, my name is Stanley Kellerman. For 30 years I have studied and written about the emotional life of the body. I am a pioneer in the field of somatic emotional education. The following exercises are a result of the many years of observation and practice. The purpose of the exercises is to be able to have an influence on your behavior. And in this particular instance, we're talking about depressive and panic behavior. Your brain influences your body and your emotional life by shifting its attitudes. Attitudes are an emotional and physical shape. This is partly a, the neurophysiology of emotional behavior. The exercises continue this dialogue between brain and the muscular attitude with the emphasis on managing patterns of depression and panic. You will see one of the students guiding himself through and managing common patterns of depression and panic. Hi, my name is Terry McClure. For most of my life, I have suffered from depression and bouts of panic. A few years ago, I learned some simple exercises that helped me manage much better. It's not the only thing that I tried. I tried a lot of things. But I continue to practice the exercises today because they continue to work for me. So I made this tape to show you what I've learned. Before we begin, I'd like to also show you what is meant in the title the shapes of depression and panic. When I'm really in an extreme panic, this is what I can look like on the inside and outside. My head is back, my neck is stiff, my shoulders are up, my mouth is open, my stomach is pulled up into my diaphragm, and my diaphragm shoved into my lungs. My lungs are squeezed upward. I'm making shorter breaths. Emotionally, I have a feeling of doom and dread, and I feel scared. I can't concentrate. I'm fragmented. I've got so much electricity running through me, I'm going in many different directions. And sometimes I become so totally paralyzed with fear, I cannot act. When I am depressed, I can look like this on the inside and the outside. Inside, everything has collapsed, and all my inner spaces are smaller. The corners of my mouth are turned downward. My eyes point downward. There is no horizon. It's as if I'm trying to disappear. I'm slow, unresponsive, and hibernating. I don't feel as if I have a future, and nothing works. Sometimes I cry, and sometimes I don't even feel a thing. I definitely feel no pleasure. And at this moment, this is the only world I know. I've learned that if I change my shape slightly, it doesn't take a lot. It affects the degree of panic and depression I have. Watch my shape of depression change slightly here. It doesn't seem like it's changing a lot, but big things are going on inside. The internal chambers shift. They are not going downward as much. I don't mean snapping out of it, willing myself out of depression and panic. What I do mean is changing slightly. And over time, this has had a profound effect on me. By the way, your shape doesn't have to be this extreme or this obvious for you to experience depression or panic. It can be a very, very small degree of what you've just seen. So this is what is meant by the shapes of depression and panic. It's what we really mean when we say you look depressed or panicked. It means your shape is depressed or panicked. Now the first part of this tape contains a little insight into how depression is related to panic, and they are related. The second part of the tape contains the exercises where you will see me doing them standing up. They can also be done sitting or lying down. You'll also see some computer animation to help remind you what is going on inside. In this animation here, you can see the lungs and stomach pressing in, which is typical of someone depressing themselves. And at the end of each exercise, you'll see an image of a journal, which is the time to stop the tape and record your progress and changes. One way is to draw a somogram, which is an emotional reflection of yourself. It's a way to get to know your own shape and depict how you feel 
where you hurt, need help, and what you think and feel inside. Try to draw it as you experience yourself, not necessarily as a work of art. After the exercises, there will be some answers to common questions with Stanley Kellerman. Now let's begin with a short introduction to how depression and panic are related. Depression and panic are like two sides of the same coin. One side is depression and the other side is panic. Sometimes we depress ourselves to mask panic and sometimes we overstimulate ourselves to mask depression. When one is there, the other is often lurking covered up. Now let's look in between the two sides. What you see here are many degrees of panic and depression shapes, not just two. They're in relationship to each other. It's a continuum. On one end, there is extreme, underwhelming depression. On the other side, there is extreme, overwhelming panic. And in between, you have all these degrees. All these degrees and extremes are emotional body shapes, and each shape influences your experience of depression and panic. To find out which shapes contribute to your depression and panic, go slowly when doing the exercises. We aren't necessarily trying to get rid of anything. We are learning what our shape is when we are depressed and panicked, and what happens when we make slight changes in these shapes. Let's move on to the first exercise. You can do the exercises lying down, sitting in a chair, or standing up. There are four exercises, two for depression and two for panic. It is best to choose one that you sense applies to you and work mainly with this exercise. All of the exercises are subtle, yet work deeply and are very powerful. There may be no outward difference you notice, nor any inner changes immediately. The exercises work best by slowly practicing and letting them have an accumulative effect. The first exercise is called pressuring yourself, which is one of the two basic shapes we take on when depressed. In this exercise, you will learn how parts of yourself move inward as you pressure yourself. After familiarizing yourself with the shape, you will know how to increase and decrease this common pattern of depression. The ability to volitionally alter your shape of depression is the essential tool of self-management. Beginning with a small amount, pressure yourself by tightening all around, just a little. You can start by pulling your arms closer to your chest and tensing them slightly, and stay there. Are there any other parts of yourself that you are contracting and pressuring at the same time? Continue to pressure yourself by tightening your head and neck and shoulders, chest, back, arms, hands, stomach, pelvis, and legs. Do this a small amount all around and stay there. Do you have a sense of controlling yourself. Does this amount of pressure give you this sense of controlling yourself? Now make yourself even stiffer. Just compress yourself and brace against expanding. Pull yourself in a little bit more. Move your arms even closer to the chest. Now if you have a sense of controlling yourself, has the degree of it changed? Are you controlling yourself even more? Now even stiffer. Increase the intensity of the stiffness. Pull your legs together without actually moving them. This is the first level of a controlling, compacting, compression, or pressuring. Stay in this shape with the level of intensity you have for a few more moments. This is a basic shape of depression, pressuring, compacting, and compression. Now, let's undo the shape slowly, a level of intensity at a time and a section at a time. Do it a little bit less, back up, 
what you've just done, undo. Start with the shoulders. Undo it a little bit. Now with the sides of the legs, the outside of the legs, and wait there. Just wait. Now go to your throat and jaw and wait there. Can you notice any changes in your respiration? And also, where are you looking? Where is your line of vision? And as you decompress, uncompress, do you notice more of a horizon? Begin again to undo it around the shoulders and around the arms and the hands. Unpressure the sides of the legs a little bit more and inside of the legs. And see if you can undo the tension patterns inside the mouth and inside the jaw and down the throat. And see if you can get the feeling now of uncompressing yourself. Uncompressing the pressure that you started and built up. Notice if there is a change in the way that you're oriented. In other words, are you looking at the horizon, downward, or in between? And what is different now? Do you have a new sensation? Do you have many new sensations? Are they pulsing sensations, and where are they? Do you feel yourself more or less? Do you pressure yourself to some degree on a daily basis? And in the process of making this pressuring shape, then unmaking it, how does that affect the pressure you have on a daily basis? It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal, work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can continue after a brief pause and go on to part two. Part two has slightly more intensity. In this part, we'll take more notice of the emotional content of the pressured shape. For example, feeling small, and disappearing, being invisible, and not wanting to be seen, being obedient, feelings of having no future, which may be no feeling at all. Look out for your own emotional contents as you make the pressured shape and see what happens to the intensity of the emotions when you unpressure the shape. Pressure yourself inward. Gather yourself together from all the corners. Bring the shoulders in. Push against the sides of the body with your arms. Down the legs. Inside the mouth. Bring the belly together from front to back. Bring the chest together without collapsing. Feel the rigidity and compression. You're pressuring yourself in the throat, in the mouth, in the eyes, in the head. And contract as if you're trying to make yourself disappear. Feel any changes in your facial expression and how your breathing might be inhibited. Is this the way you disappear? What is it like? Now pressure yourself more, as if you're trying to disappear and become invisible. Compress the front of the chest, the abdomen. Pull your abdomen in and stiffen your spine. Do you notice any change in your neck? Notice how your nostrils may want to pull together. From here, can you get a sense of being obedient? One more step. Feel as though you were being pulled into a very tiny space. Pull yourself inward to the degree you could say, I don't exist. Do you have this feeling 
of not existing. Notice now your eyes may be wanting to close and may be closed to block off any sort of horizon. And if so, where are you looking? Why there? Can you not look upward? Do you have a feeling of no future? And wait in this shape for a few moments. Now, begin to undo this shape a step at a time, doing it less and backing up. And what you've just done, undo, starting with the shoulders, and then with the sides of the legs, and the outside of the legs, and wait a little bit. And now with your throat and jaw, but don't undo it all the way. Continue holding yourself, as if desperately keeping yourself from flying apart. What kind of pressuring is still going on? What kind of pressuring are you doing to keep yourself from flying apart? And is this familiar? If you had to keep yourself from flying apart, is this how you would do it? Are there times when this is how you hold it together? And wait here a few moments and notice any changes in your respiration. Is there any change in the orientation of your face? Where are you looking? And is this familiar? Begin to undo it again around the shoulders and undo the arms into the hands and the sides of the legs, the insides of the legs, and see if you can undo the tension patterns inside the mouth and inside the jaw and down the throat. And get the feeling now of uncompressing yourself. How are you oriented now? And where are you focusing? Is there a horizon? Is it difficult to look upward, or is it a relief? You are back where you started, and wait here for a moment. Notice any sensations, and where they are, and what has changed in your basic personal shape. It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal again. You can work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work, or you can rewind to the beginning of the exercise and start again. This is the exercise to learn the second common shape of depression. This shape pulls the chest inward and collapses everything downward. What we'll do here is dramatize it for ourselves and see if we discover the emotional components that go with it. This will develop your ability to volitionally increase and decrease the shape and the emotional states that accompany it. Again, this is important in developing self-management. Our goal is to manage our incremental movement from shape to shape and discover what each shape means for us. Begin to pull your chest in. Make it smaller. Let your back go back and round as you do this. Let your head move forward slightly and your shoulders round. As you pull in your chest, let it sink in. Let your belly begin to sink in and protrude by letting your knees buckle just a little. This is the first movement into a depressive attitude and position. Hold it there and notice also what has happened to your facial expression. Now increase this Pull the chest in more and collapse downward.
collapse into the belly even more, so that the whole upper half of the body has sunk and begins to collapse inside itself. Notice you may be fixing your eyes and head as you continue to collapse inward. Do you have a terror of collapse and a feeling of having to hold on? Many people fix their eyes and head to keep from collapsing into depression. Let's go another step. Continue to collapse inward. Get a sense of stopping everything. Do you get a sense of inertia? This is the sunken, collapsed shape of depression. Just wait here a moment and see what you can discover. Now let's lessen this shape a little at a time. Undo the chest by not pulling it in as much. Unround the shoulders and allow the belly to rise again and notice how you begin to come back. Notice any sensations that may be filling you up. Unbuckle the legs just a little and undo the sinking abdomen a little more. Pay attention to your hands and arms. Lessen tension and collapse in legs. And wait here. What has happened to your head and eyes? Are you starting to look upward toward more of a horizon? What is the expression on your face and how has it changed? Are you facing outward? You have now increased and decreased a collapsing shape that is common in depression. It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal, work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can continue after a brief pause and go on to part two. Now that we have the collapsing shape down, let's discover and link the emotional components. Begin again by pulling in the chest. Let your legs buckle. Let yourself sink down, the belly protrude, and the head go forward. Let your eyes look down, curtailing the horizon, and wait. What do you feel? Do you have a sense of slowing, a stopping, an unwillingness, inertia. Is there anything familiar? For you, what is being dramatized? Collapse inward and downward even more. And this time, suck your tongue back into your throat, just a little. As you do this, are your lips tightening? Let your belly continue to protrude a little bit more. Do this pulling in and collapsing inward so that you enter a state of apathy. Is this familiar? What is here for you if not apathy? What else? Collapse even more and this time into helplessness. Let your mouth open wider. Do you have any terror of continuing to collapse more and sinking into depression? Is there anxiety, any anxiety, of wanting to get out of the state quickly? Or do you perhaps want to stay here and hold it here for a moment and see what else you discover. Now, 
a little at a time, slowly begin to lessen and disorganize the intensity of this shape. Start through the feet. Unbuckle the legs just a little bit and wait. Do you notice any wave of sensation that comes from disorganizing the intensity by lessening the intensity? If so, let the disorganizing wave go through the shoulders. Let it go through the upper chest and diaphragm. And let it begin to fill the throat. And undo the throat if the throat is contracted and collapsed. Let the pulse of sensation fill you as you disorganize the last of the pulling in and collapsing shape you created and wait here. And what is different? What happens to the levels of inertia, apathy, helplessness, and any other emotional states you've discovered as you manage to go in increments from shape to shape. What are you left with now? Has anything changed? Has anything been uncovered? And how has this exercise affected the state you started with? It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal again. You can work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can rewind to the beginning of the exercise and start again. This exercise is called pressuring the head. One of the ways we respond to being overwhelmed is by pressuring our heads. Being overwhelmed is a panic state. And this response can lead to depression of the brain functions or it can be the prelude to even further panic. Put your hands on the side of your head and press. Get the experience of what it is like to have your head pressured. Now, take your hands down and see if you can keep up the sense of pressure and try to keep your eyes open. Without your hands, increase the pressure slightly by squeezing as if your head is in a vise. Begin to move your eyes toward your nose. Furrow your brow. Compress all the muscles of the eyes. And keep pressuring inward between the ears and around your neck. On the top of your head. How has your breathing been affected? And also, what has happened to your shoulders and your arms and your hands just by pressuring your head and wait here? Now compress a little more in the throat, in the back of the neck, the top of the head, and wait here. Is there more stiffness all over besides your head? This is how we often respond to being overwhelmed. Notice where else you are affected. Now slowly, very slowly, begin to uncompress, unpressure your head and wait here. Notice where you started from. Did you start from the top of the head, the neck or the throat, or maybe the eyes, or maybe even down lower in the hands and the arms to get to your head. Where do you sense most of the compressing and pressure and holding as you wait here? And how is your breathing affected? Uncompress your head a little more. When you uncompress this little bit more, 
Is it in just one area, or is it all over and all at once? Besides in your head, where else have you unpressured and uncompressed? Again, such as your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your diaphragm, and your stomach. Now uncompress your head all the way back, back to where you started. And what sensations do you have? What is filling your head? And what has changed? You have now increased and decreased pressuring your head. This can be a prelude to further panic, or it can contribute to depression of the brain functions. It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal, work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can continue after a brief pause and go on to part two. Let's move to part two of pressuring the head and find the emotional states involved. In many people, pressuring their head is the prelude to panic, and in others, it is a dulling of the world around them and in them, leading to depression of the brain functions. Again, put your hands on the side of your head and begin to press. Get the experience of what it is like to pressure your head. Now take your hands down and see if you can continue the sense of pressure and try to keep your eyes open. Increase the pressure on your head without your hands and pay close attention to where you started. Did it seem to start at the top, in the throat, in the eyes, all over, all at once? And continue the pressure slightly between the ears, at the top of the head, in the back of your neck and throat. And with this pressuring, do you have a frightened feeling? Is there a sense of protecting yourself from being overwhelmed? Is there a dulling or a numbness? And wait here. What is familiar to you? Pressure your head a little more until you get the feeling of stilling yourself. And wait here for a moment. Use this pressure in your head to protect yourself from too much information, too much stimulus, and outside influence, as if it's too much. What do you think your facial expression is like? And what else is happening to you as you pressure your head this way? Is there a sense of wanting everything to go away? Is there a sense of thinking everything will just go away if I do this? Begin to unpressure. Just a little, not all the way. Manage to go from one level of compression and pressure to the next. Uncompress around your neck, your throat, your eyes, and ears. What else uncompresses as you do this? What emotional state decreases? Or what emotional state increases? Uncompress your head again. Again, what else is uncompressing and unpressuring? And what emotional state lessens or increases at this level of pressuring your head? What is happening with your breathing? How is it being affected? Is your breathing longer or shorter? How is it connected to your sense of stilling and fright or dulling and numbness? Or what else have you discovered? How has it affected that? Uncompress to where you started. Uncompress all the way. Uncompress. Uncompress. And notice any sensations that may be filling your head.
is time to stop the tape and record in your journal again. You can work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can rewind to the beginning of the exercise and start again. This is a basic exercise to learn the shape of panic. We feel panic when we are overwhelmed. Panic is excitement spilling in many directions, being fragmented and having no focus. It is a state that sometimes covers up depression. It is being fearful and anxious. It carries with it a feeling of impending doom. And sometimes it is so paralyzing you cannot act. With your hands and arms by your sides, begin to turn your palms outward. Increase the tension in your arms and hands. Let your head tilt slightly back and begin to let your mouth open. Open your eyes wider and increase the tension in the back of your neck. And very slightly, tighten your legs and get a sense that your feet are pulling upward toward your head. This is the shape of panic. Move into the next shape of panic by pulling your chest and lung cavity upward. And as you do this, what else has tightened? What do you notice with your breathing? Is it more rapid? Is it longer or shorter? And wait here and get to know what comes with this shape. Increase this one more time slightly. Open the mouth wider and open the eyes wider and dramatize for yourself a sense of panic. Hold it here and see what you discover for yourself. Now, begin to undo the shape slowly. Very slowly, decrease the tension in your hands and up your arms just a little bit. Now, in your legs and in your neck, decrease the tension there. Let your mouth close slightly and wait here. Get to know this level of panic that you've decreased to. You've managed from one shape to the next in this very small increment. Now, go back to where you started slowly by decreasing this shape altogether. up the hands and arms, bringing the palms all the way back and the head forward, letting the mouth close and decreasing the tension in the back of your neck. You've now managed increasing and decreasing the shape of panic. It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal, work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work. Or you can continue after a brief pause and go on to part two. Let's practice the shape some more and try to discover and link the emotional components. With your hands and arms by your sides, Begin to turn your palms outward. Increase the tension in your hands and arms and let your head tilt slightly back and begin to let your mouth open. Open your eyes wider and increase the tension in the back of your neck. Tighten your legs slightly and get a sense that your feet are pulling upward towards your head. You may be holding your breath. 
Move your chest upward. And what have you invoked here? Do you feel terror? And if so, of what? And stay here for a moment and find out. Now increase this state by letting your mouth and eyes open wider. Your legs, hands, and arms stiffen more. Is this tiring? Is it exhausting being terrified and panicked and holding this? What is here for you? What has happened to your breathing? Is it shallower, more rapid? Are you holding your breath? Are your eyes fixed? Are they darting around? Are they wide open? To invoke a stronger sense of terror, let your head go back even further. Your eyes open very wide and bring a maximum tension to your legs, arms, and hands. How does this state of panic and terror compare with your own? Do you sometimes feel this way? Have you invoked a feeling of being paralyzed, unable to move and act? Is there a lack of focus and direction except on your terror and panic? Do you get the sense that you're not part of the world, that you cannot engage in it? And wait here for a moment and see what you discover on your own. Now let's lessen this intensity of shape and emotion by reducing the tension in your legs, feet, hands, and arms. Let your eyes and mouth close slightly and tilt your head forward if it is still back and stay here. And what emotion has lessened for you? Now lessen it some more and wait here. Remember, you are learning to manage going from shape to shape slightly, almost as if you were looking for in-between shapes. Now lessen the shape all the way to where you started, in the shoulders and the neck, in the knees, legs, and feet, up into the head, and let yourself organize inside a personal or social inner form that allows you to be back in the world. And as you do this and complete this, wait and notice any sensations that may come and see what is different and see how this has affected your original shape you started with and how this has affected your own panic. Is it more? Is it less? It is time to stop the tape and record in your journal again. You can work on a somogram, write some brief comments and date your work, or you can rewind to the beginning of the exercise and start again. Can I expect to feel better during these exercises is a common question. As you shift your emotional shape, you shift your mood, you can expect to open the door to more emotional possibilities and arrange. We're not looking to feel better, but to influence this range of emotional expression. A lot of people ask me, what do you mean manage? The major goal of the exercises is to manage the incremental shifts from shape to shape, which give rise to the degrees of depression and panic. If you have determined that pressuring yourself is a particular way that contributes to your depression, then by pressuring yourself more and then less, you will give yourself a sense of managing a small window you have purposely created. And why should that be helpful? 
the small window you have created, taking the same depressive pattern you have during the more, doing it more than undoing it, feeds back to the brain. And it tells the brain, I did this much, and I undid what I did. I managed myself. This eventually begins to have an effect in the more global depressive pattern in the brain. Remember, feeling better is not the goal. Self-management is. What happens if I feel worse? You may have participated in the exercise too intensely, contracted yourself with too much vigor. This is a sign that you should do it less. Another reason that you may feel temporarily worse is that you are de-anesthetizing yourself to the muscular part of your depressive attitude and that experiencing it increases your awareness of the depressive attitude. This is part of reorienting yourself to how, in fact, you pressure yourself. In a while, undoing it will relieve the feeling of too much spasticity or contracting of the pattern. A particular concern is how often should people do the exercises. A general rule of thumb is to do it in very short spurts, to practice doing it for minutes at a time, and then doing it many minutes over a period of time, eight or nine times in a day for two minutes or three minutes at a time. This begins to set up a pattern inside that feels comfortable and finally becomes somewhat automatic and that which you just simply function as unpressuring yourself and containing yourself. A lot of people try to say, is there an ideal shape, an uncompressed shape? I say over and over again, there is no ideal shape. There is knowing how you use yourself, and then there is knowing and recognizing the shape that gives you a sense of comfort. Self-management being able to influence yourself is important because it restores a sense of self-potency. It gives the person some recognized and established ability to affect themselves, and this reduces the sense of being a victim to oneself. A part of panic and depression is that one is unable to manage themselves. Being able to affect yourself, do something more and do it less, restores a sense of being able to influence yourself. And then this lifts part of the pattern of panic and depression. Doing the exercises is a practice. The attempt is to influence your behavior. There are many factors in any situation that afflicts us deeply. And there's no accounting for all the possibilities inside any situation. I would say that I have found these exercises very beneficial for helping many people. I wish you luck.